Hey kids, I hope you're doing good. Hope you're having a good week. So as we do our little midweek Bible study, uh, open up to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Now, before you get there, don't look at it. I want you to think, do you know what this chapter is about? Before you get there, do you know what Hebrews 11 is about? Now, I hope you can answer, but if you can't, what I really encourage you to do is that Hebrews chapter 11, this is a chapter you should know. You should know what this chapter is about. You should know what this chapter talks about. And really, you should know what this chapter can represent to you. So when you're asked, what is Hebrews 11 about? You should be able to say faith. Or maybe even say the hall of faith. But really, faith is what you need to think about. So I want you to think for a moment. And if you're at home with your parents, or maybe you have pen and paper, I want you to think about what the word faith is. Maybe write it down. Maybe tell your parents what it is. Just think about your own definition of faith. If I were to ask you to give me the definition of faith, what would you say? So just take, a little, take just a little moment and just think about that, the definition of faith. So, faith is a huge part of our Christian walk, a huge part of who we are as Christians. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And we're going to see that a little later on in the chapter in verse 6. Um, but faith is believing in something without seeing it. So, look here in, in Hebrews 11, verses 1. It says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, for the conviction of of things not seen. For by the people of old received their condemnation. By faith we understand the universe was created by the word of God. So that, we, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. So one thing you cannot do is you cannot see God. You don't get to see him. You don't really get to communicate with God. Obviously you talk to God in prayer. But you don't get to actually have a conversation where God might talk back to you. So what faith is, is it's that assurance. That's the word used there, right? You're really sure. You're 100%. You know that God is there. When you talk to God in prayer, obviously you can't see him listening, and he's not going to talk back, but you know he's there, and you do know he's listening. If you go out to the world, you're not going to get to go and shake God's hand, but you go out to the world, and you know God is there, always knowing that he's there. And when it talks about uh, things hoped for, right? Hope is a huge part of Christian walk. You know, we all hope that God exists. We hope that Jesus is real. Hope that Jesus died on the cross. Hope of the Holy Spirit that helps us in our Christian life. And we have a hope of heaven, right? All these really good things. We have hope for those things. But it's not just, oh, I really hope they're out there. It's, I know these things I want out there are out there. And that's what faith is. Uh, faith is what has driven humanity all throughout. It's what makes us today Christians, everyone that gathers to de together on Sundays and on Wednesdays, they're faithful. Right? Nobody can prove that God exists. Nobody 100% can show it, but they know it. They have faith in it, and they believe it, and that's how, how we have a church. So we're going to look at some of these different characters and talk about what it is to have real faith. So first, faith is believing in God. That is the first step. The first step in the steps of salvation is to hear the word of God. Hear it, and you believe it. You hear of, every, of who God is, what he's done, what Jesus done for us, and you believe it. So that's the first step, believing. So in verse 4, it says, By faith Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by his gifts, and through his faith, though he die, he still speaks. So the first example, by faith Abel was able to offer a more excellent sacrifice. So if you're not familiar with that story, so they both offered sacrifices. Cain's wasn't very good, wasn't acceptable, but Abel's was. And how was he able to do that? By faith. Verse 5, it says, By faith Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had taken him. Now, there, now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. So how was, Abel, how was Enoch able to be taken up so that he should not see death? How was he able to do that? Because of the faith that he had. And we see in verse 6, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists 
and that he rewards those who seek him. So right now, if you want to be a Christian, if you haven't been baptized yet, before you can do that, you have to have faith. You have to believe in God. And if you have been baptized, you do believe in God, or I hope you do. You better believe in God. You believe in who he is. But notice what it says. It says you don't just believe that he exists, but you believe that he rewards those who seek him. So you believe God exists, and then you believe that if you follow him in the correct way, you seek after him, you'll be rewarded for it. And that's what having true faith is. But you have to remember, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Verse 7, by faith Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he, he con condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that, that comes by faith. So why did Noah build the ark? Why, did he, why was he able to be saved? Because of the faith that he had. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called out to go to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went into the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise, for he was looking forward to the city that he has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. So how was Abraham able to abandon everything they had, leave, and then obviously have the, through his offspring, heirs to the kingdom of God, to Jesus? How was he able to accomplish all that? Because of his faith. Verse 11, by faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past, past the age, since she was considered faithful who had promised. So Sarah was really old, probably not going to have kids, and she spent her whole life being barren. But how was she eventually able to have kids? Because she had faith. Therefore, from one man and him, as good as, as, good as dead, who were born, descended as many as the stars of heaven, and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers, strangers and exile on the earth. For people who speak this make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country. This is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared them a city. So, one thing that I want you to understand from looking at all these different characters, and we're going to stop there and probably look at the next ones next time. So all these characters, the way they were able to do anything was because of their faith. They believed in God, and then they were able to do these great things. So in life, if you want to do great things as a Christian, you've got to believe in God. And think about what we looked at in Hebrews 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. You, be, you have to believe he exists, but then believe he's going to reward you when you seek after him. If you seek after God and do your best in life, God, excuse me, God will take care of you. Seek after him, do your best, and God will reward you. That's something I can promise you will happen. You can have that faith, and you can believe that, and I promise you, it's going to come true. I hope you have a good rest of the week, and we'll, we'll probably finish this chapter up next week.